Let me begin by praying. Heavenly Father God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in us, through us, and around us as it is in heaven, that we may be holy as thou art holy. Give us ears to hear your voice and obey your commands and walk in your precepts and be righteous as you are righteous and receive your righteousness by faith, Lord God, in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name, by the power of your Holy Spirit, may you get all the glory. Amen. Okay, so God, via Holy Spirit, has given me a word. A word for this month. We are in May, right? And so God did say, and he did confirm through um, prophetic words from his prophets, um, that in the month of May that we are going to be delivered from our addictions and he has said to me that I will deliver you from all of your addictions I have heard your prayer in your secret place I have heard your prayer and your cry in the streets and I will deliver you from all of your addictions but he says you will not be free from your addictions until you take off your filthy rags. And so I want to uh, title this message today, From Rags to Riches. From Rags to Riches. Now he talked to me about the filthy rags and he said that he reminded me of his word that says that our righteousness is like filthy rags before him. And those are the filthy rags that he wants us to take off. Self-righteousness. So that we can receive by faith the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So that we can be holy as he is holy. So that we can be the righteousness of God. And he remind me in his word when it talks about, you know, that he doesn't want our confidence to be in our flesh. The, he doesn't want us to live by the flesh. He wants us to live by the spirit and in spirit and in truth. And so if we are doing something fleshly, how we take that is that, okay, living in the flesh means that we don't, that we are living in sin. And God says, yes, but also he wants to address that repentance is needed when it comes to uh, our confidence being in the works of our flesh, whether it is good or evil or considered good or evil. Because he said, if I did not do it, it is not good. Whether it looks good or not, it's not good. And he wants us to stop um, calling good evil and evil good and it's so easy to be deceived and into thinking something is good because it looks good and it sounds good but he says I am the only one that's good so if I have not done it and you have done it yourself then it is not good so if you're delivering yourself from addictions it is not good because he says that every good thing comes from him and it is perfect and he does not change like the shifting shadows Okay, and he said the blessings of the Lord makes us rich and he adds no sorrow to it. And so if, you know, you are delivering yourself or saving yourself, sorrow comes with it because you have not been transformed by the renewing of your mind yet. And you are giving up something that you still have a heart's desire for. And God does not want your heart to desire anything unclean or evil. Even if you have already given it up, it is not, a, a, it is not done in spirit and in truth because you still want that thing and you still want to do that thing. And that thing is constantly distracting you from the voice of God and the move of God in your life. He is calling us to our, to our destiny and to our purpose. And in order for, for us to um, walk in our true purpose and our true destiny, we cannot walk in with filthy rags on. We cannot walk in with self-righteousness. We cannot walk in 
with having confidence in our flesh to save our own selves. He said, if you try to save yourself, your own life, you will lose it. And so, and Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so in order to save your life, you have to seek Jesus. He said, ask and you shall find. He said, ask and you shall receive and seek and you shall find. And we need to seek Jesus and get on our knees to find his grace that is sufficient for us. He reminds me of his servant in the Bible where he was asking God, you know, he said, I asked God three times to take this thorn from my flesh. And God didn't say yes, no, maybe. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And the reason why God says my grace is sufficient for you is because he doesn't want us to become conceited. He doesn't want us to think that we have delivered ourselves. And sometimes we, um, we um, worship the Lord you know, or honor the Lord with our lips, but our heart is far from him because we are saying, oh, God delivered me from this addiction. But in our hearts, we believe and we feel that we have done it. And if you don't believe that I'm speaking the truth, just think about it and, and, and really be true to yourself. You know, because there are times it will just slip out of your mouth. You trying to give the Lord the testimony and say, yes, the Lord delivered me from this and that. And then you don't pay attention to the times when you say, I stopped doing this or I stopped doing that, whatever your addiction is. If your addiction is smoking cigarettes, if your addiction is smoking weed, if your addiction is alcohol, if your addiction is sex, sexual sin, okay, fornication, adultery, whatever your addiction is, God said, confess your on your knees. He said, humble yourselves before me and pray and confess on your knees what your addiction is. And then he said, be stripped from your self-righteousness, okay? And that self-righteousness is like filthy rags before me. So I don't want you to come to me in your self-righteousness anymore saying, God, I gave this up so that I can have a relationship with you. He wants you to be able to say, God, thank you for delivering me. Thank you. You are my deliverer. You are my salvation. You are my redeemer. You are the one that redeemed me. You said, ask and receive, and I receive by faith, Lord God, my deliverance from you. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. Jesus Christ is our savior. Jesus Christ is our deliverer. And it is Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father that will deliver us and redeem us and save us. We do not have to redeem ourselves. We do not have to deliver ourselves. And we will never be truthfully delivered until we give up and be stripped, be willing to be stripped from our rags in order to come before the Lord, the Lord's throne in our riches. God said he wants to strip you from your self-righteousness so that you can wear his garment of praise. And a lot of us don't, don't understand what praise means. How do you praise God? God says you won't understand what praise is until you are stripped from your righteousness. That is the only way you can praise God is if you are stripped from your self-righteousness, stripped from your filthy rags, and you come before him in your in your uh riches in your garment of praise you can't help but praise him when he delivers you from something and you're you're transformed by the renewing of your mind and you no longer have the desire or the need for something that does not please god an addiction to anything does not please god because god will never come against our free will and addiction takes away our free will. Addiction causes us to do things that we do not want to want to do. That's how deep it is. Okay. I noticed I did not say addiction doesn't um, take away our desire to do something that we want to do. I said we do not want to want to do. Okay. Because that's how 
deep that the devil got the dig in order to keep us addicted to something. He said, okay, you don't have to want it, all right? But I'm going to make sure that you uh, do it anyway, basically. And so I want to want to not be addicted to anything ever again in my Christian life. And so I ask God in the name of Jesus to strip us from our self-righteousness, from our filthy rags so that we can come before him in the righteousness of God and he can clothe us in his garment of praise. But he's not going to clothe you in his garment of praise if you are still wearing rags, filthy rags. He's not going to put his garment on top of filthy rags. You have to be stripped first. And then he will give you his garment of praise. And when he is ready to send you into spiritual warfare, which is your destiny, your calling in Christ Jesus, then he will uh, clothe you in his full armor. You know, and we like to tell each other and tell ourselves that we need to put on the armor of God. You cannot put on the armor of God. You can ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. You can get on your knees, humble yourself and get on your knees and ask God for his garment of praise and ask God to clothe you with his full armor so that you can be ready and anointed to win the spiritual warfare in your life to to come to be able to come against the 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 evil schemes of the devil and the principalities in 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 dark places we cannot come against these things without the full armor of god the helmet of salvation the breastplate of righteousness our um, loins need to be girded up with the tr with god's truth we need to have the word of the spirit we need to have the shield of faith we need to have the our feet needs to be fit shod with the gospel of peace and we cannot clothe ourselves in these things we have to get on our knees humble ourselves and pray and ask god that we shall receive by faith his garment of praise and his full armor so that we can praise him and come against the kingdom of darkness that 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 has assignments against us and our family and those that we're connected to, our cities, our countries. We cannot come against unless we first humble ourselves. God says he's bringing down the ones who exalt themselves and taking them out of position. Okay? I'm being surrounded by cars. <laughs> God said he's bringing them down, but he is going to exalt those who are humble. So we have to be humble enough to say, God, I cannot do this on my own. I need you to save me. I cannot save myself. There is nothing that I can do in my flesh to earn my way into heaven. Only you, God, can qualify me if I am not qualified. So, Lord, we ask you to qualify us today. For we are not qualified unless you qualify us. Lord, we humbly ask you. Lord God, to deliver us and redeem us and save us from the law of sin and from the law of death so that we can break free from curses and assignments and demonic schemes against our lives and our destinies. So we can, you said, God said that there is liberty in Christ Jesus. We want to be free to walk in our destinies and we cannot be free if we are slaves to sin and to be to have an addiction is slavery to sin and we do not want to be slaves to sin anymore we do not want to keep coming to god calling ourselves um uh praising him in garments that are filthy rags before him you do not have the ability to praise him in spirit and in truth if you are not wearing the correct garments, okay? And so I just want you to be blessed that at, by that message, God has given me that word. And when he gave me that word, he said, beloved, do not despise the process. 
And a lot of times we don't realize that we despise the process and that's why we keep picking up our self-righteousness to get it done because we do not want to wait on God. We in our waiting, we'll wait a little while, but in our waiting, if we feel like nothing is happening soon enough, the enemy comes in and start convincing us that we have to do it if it needs to get done. It, you know what I'm saying? If it, they say, um, if you want something done, you got to do it yourself. That's what they say, whoever they is. Who are they being influenced by? Where are they getting this information from? Okay. If you want something done, you got to do it yourself. God said, no, I will do it for you. I will cause you to be righteous. I will cause you to be uncomfortable in that sin, in that addiction. I will cause you to despise those things that I despise, thus saith the Lord your God. And then you will be free, but you will be free in the mind first. He has to transform you by the renewing of your mind. And he said, do not despise the process. It's going to take some things. It's going to take some time for some of us. And do not be weary in your waiting. God says, I will not leave you in the hands of the enemy. Have faith and trust in me. If you stop picking up those rags, because God said, it's showing me that a lot of times he has stripped us from our self-righteousness. And then we waited and then we waited and we got tired of waiting. And so we went and found some rags and decided to dress ourselves because we did not like feeling vulnerable. We did not like being exposed. We did not like being naked. But God said, I will cover your nakedness. My love covers a multitude of your sins. So don't look at yourself naked and think that that's the way everybody else sees you. He said, I will hide you in my glory, in my righteousness, in my holiness. I will hide you in my love until I clothe you in my garment of praise and clothe you with my full armor. So I just want you to be encouraged by that word. I ask again that the Lord will give you ears to hear his voice and obey. By what power? The power of the Holy Spirit and not by your flesh. Saints, it is time for us to repent. We hear all the time that we need to repent, repent, repent from our evil and wicked ways. And God is rewording that so that you can understand that you need to repent, repent, repent from your filthy rags. So that he can bring you from your rags to your riches. Repent from self-righteousness. Repent from the confidence in your flesh. So that his grace that is sufficient in you will cover you. And it, his, his strength will be made, made perfect in your weaknesses. And his power will be made perfect in your weaknesses. His glory will be made perfect in your, in your weaknesses. His holiness and righteousness will be made perfect in your weaknesses. So no, I will not take this thorn from your flesh. I will make sure that my grace is sufficient for you so that when you are transformed by the renewing of your minds and clothed in the garment of praise and you wear my full armor, there is nothing, no weapon that's formed against you that will prosper in this season. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will delight ourselves in God and he will give us the desires of our hearts. And if we need, if our hearts are stony, he will give us a new heart so that he can give us the desires of our new hearts that are able to worship him in spirit and in truth, able to serve him in spirit and in truth and not in flesh. Have a blessed day. Till next time, subscribe, like, comment, and you will be notified every time I upload and come at you with another video to edify you, to strengthen you, and to comfort you in the word of God. All right? I love you. Be blessed. Later.